In this video, I'm going to lay out a complete roadmap of the essential skills you need to become a front-end developer. Whether you're a beginner wanting to know what to learn to land a front-end developer job or someone with some experience looking to level up your skills and filling the gaps, this video is for you. We'll cover what each skill is, why it's important, and a realistic timeline for learning it. Ready? Let's dive in. Web development is generally broken down into two areas, front-end development and back-end development, and then full-stack development, which is a combination of both. Front-end development is all about what the user sees and interacts with. It's the website in your browser or the app on your mobile phone or tablet. Backend development handles everything behind the scenes, like data processing, storage, and logic. In this video, our focus is only on front-end development. I'm planning to create a similar video on backend development, so check the description box for the link. Now, before we get started, let's answer a common question. How long does it take to become a front-end developer? Well, the answer varies for everyone, but it can take anywhere from 6 to 12 months of consistent studying and practice. The key here is consistency and continuous learning. To help you on this journey, I've created a free supplementary PDF that breaks down the specific concepts you need to learn for each skill. It also includes several project ideas to help you practice and apply what you have learned. It's a great resource to review your progress, find gaps in your knowledge, and prepare for interviews. You can find the link in the description box. Now let's talk about the essential languages and technologies you need to learn. Front-end development is built on three core languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML or hypertext markup language is used for structuring web pages. We can define headings, paragraphs, images, links, and more. It's quite simple, and if you dedicate a few hours a day, you can learn the basics in a week or two. By the way, I have a bunch of tutorials on this channel and complete courses on my website if you're looking for structured learning. Links are in the description box. The next thing you need to learn is CSS or cascading style sheets. CSS is used for styling web pages. It allows us to control colors, fonts, layouts, and so on. It helps create responsive designs that adapt to different screen sizes. With a few hours of practice a day, you can learn the essence of CSS in two to four weeks. You won't be an expert, but you will have practical knowledge to apply in your projects. As you work on different projects, you will learn additional techniques along the way. The next thing you need to learn is JavaScript, and this is where programming starts. HTML and CSS are for structuring and styling pages, but programming is about logic, it's about algorithms, and this is where JavaScript comes in. With JavaScript, we can make our web pages interactive. We can handle user clicks, validate form data, show pop-ups, get data from the backend, and basically bring our website to life. Now, if you have never programmed before, this might be the most challenging part of your journey because you have to learn how to think like a programmer. It might feel weird at the beginning, but with continuous study and consistent practice, I'm sure you can get a reasonable grasp of it in about two months. Again, I have a bunch of tutorials on this channel and complete courses on my website if you prefer structured learning. Links are in the description box. Now, as we code, we need a way to track changes and collaborate with others. That's where version control systems, particularly Git, come into play. Git isn't a programming language. It's a tool that allows us to track changes to our code and revert to previous versions. GitHub, on the other hand, is one of the many platforms that hosts Git repositories, enabling us to share our code with others and work in a team environment. Both Git and GitHub are essential for every developer. Git has a ton of features, but you don't need to know them all for everyday use. Think of it like the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, you use 20% of Git's features. One to two weeks of practice is enough to get up and running. The next thing you need to learn is TypeScript. It's a language that's built on top of JavaScript that adds static typing and additional features, allowing us to write more robust code. These days, most companies prefer TypeScript for large-scale applications. So if you want to land a front-end developer job in 2024 and beyond, TypeScript is a must-know. It's relatively small compared to JavaScript, and you can get up and running in about two to three weeks. Next on our list is a UI or user interface library or framework. A UI framework is for building user interfaces using reusable components or building blocks. Examples include React, Angular, Vue, and so on. React is the most popular and has a ton of job opportunities. So if you're looking to land a front-end developer job, React is your best bet. Now, to learn React effectively, you need to have a solid understanding of JavaScript and basic grasp of TypeScript, because most React projects these days use TypeScript. So make sure to build a strong foundation in JavaScript before diving into React. Otherwise, you're going to face numerous challenges. 
With a solid understanding of JavaScript, you can get up and running with React in about two months. Then you can explore other options like Angular or Vue to add to your resume. Focus on one framework at a time, learn it properly, do a few projects, and once you have a solid understanding, you can learn other frameworks if you wish. So that's the core of front-end development. These skills are listed on nearly every job description. And with continuous learning and consistent practice, you can learn them all in about six months. But I gotta be honest with you, front-end development is competitive. So to truly stand out, there are additional skills you need to learn to increase your job opportunities. So let's go over them one by one. You learn that with CSS, we can style web pages and make them beautiful. Now, as our projects grow and get more complex, styling pages using plain CSS can become painful and messy. So over time, many solutions have been created to address this problem. One of them is CSS preprocessors, which allow us to write CSS in a more efficient syntax using additional features and then compile it down to plain CSS. Examples include SAS, LESS, and Stylus. Different projects use different tools and you don't need to learn all of these to apply for a front-end developer job. If you're familiar with one of them, you can quickly learn others on the job. Out of these, I would suggest SAS because it's the most popular and a good one to start with. One to two weeks is enough to get up and running with SAS. Another approach to writing manageable CSS is using a CSS framework. A CSS framework provides pre-written CSS that we can use in our applications. Some of the popular ones are Bootstrap, Tailwind, Foundation, Skeleton, and so on. Now, as you can see here on NPM Trends, Bootstrap used to be very popular and a lot of projects are still using it. But over the past couple of years, Tailwind has been emerging and overtaking Bootstrap. So a lot of newer projects, particularly React projects, use Tailwind. So out of these, I recommend learning Tailwind. It's not that complicated and you can get a decent grasp of it in about two to four weeks. Another key skill that employers are looking for, especially in senior developers, is automated testing. With automated testing, we can write code to test our code and make sure it functions correctly. Automated testing minimizes bugs and enhances the overall quality of our applications. There are many testing frameworks out there, but the two most popular ones are Jest and Vtest, which are pretty similar. So once you learn one of them, you can learn the other pretty quickly. Jest is the most popular one, but it has some baggage, so newer projects often use Vtest. Again, they're very similar and you can start with either of them. I believe three to four weeks is enough to learn the essence of Jest and automated testing principles. Next on our list is Meta Frameworks. A Meta Framework is a higher level framework that sits on top of a core UI library or framework and enhances its capabilities. It's not something that all employers are looking for because it's only used in newer projects. A lot of older projects don't use a Meta Framework, but if you wanna have a competitive edge, if you're looking for a better position with a better salary, I would recommend learning a Meta Framework. For React applications, we have Next.js, which is the more popular option, and Remix. I recommend learning Next.js, which you can master in four to six weeks if you have a strong foundation in React. Now, if you wanna get into mobile development and further increase your job opportunities, learn React Native. It's a framework for building cross-platform mobile apps using React. If you have a solid understanding of React, two months is enough to get a good grasp of React Native. So that really sums up the essential skills you need to become a front-end developer. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to answer you right here or in my future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more useful content.